Alexa Casa from Vetfolio and the host of this Vet to Vet Tech Takeover. I'm a certified veterinary technician and today's topic is one I truly believe needs to be discussed openly and often. We're digging into the importance of a strong safety culture through the eyes of veterinary nurses and technicians. Joining me is Carolyn Spivak, registered veterinary technician and the director of technician and assistant development for Mars Pet Care. Thank you for joining us today, Carolyn. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you, Samantha. I think that one of the best ways to describe a day in the clinic for us veterinary technicians is busy. Would you agree? Absolutely. And there's always something new walking through the door, right? And you have this perfect plan for the day, and it never stays that way. Uh, so we really have to be flexible, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that so often veterinary technicians put patients first, and to do that, we need to take care of ourselves too. What are some ways that you think technicians should be practicing self-care? It's such a good point, Samantha. You know, I think it's one of those things where we come to we come to the hospital or, or wherever we're at, right, to do our patient care, and we really want to put our best self first, right? We want to be there, completely dialed in, be present for our patients, yeah. and sometimes that can be really hard to do. There's we have life outside of you know our regular day jobs or whatever you know whatever positions that we're in in the hospital, um, and I think one of the things that we need to do is just breathe and find those things that really make us smile whatever that might be right like they've got all these great apps nowadays you know of how you can be mindful um that's hard to sit still sometimes <laughs> but you know even if it's reading even if it's volunteering just connecting hanging out with your your family you know whether you know it's four-legged family or two-legged family whatever that might be just finding some ways to connect outside of the hospital because um you know i think that's our best way to clear our mind and really be present because we're happy we feel fulfilled and then we show up right and we show up 110 percent which i think is really our goal every single day um and just to be that we just we just have to take that deep breath i think that helps a lot i think that's such a great point and um as technicians when we're in the trenches i think that's easy to forget but that practicing self-care, being well rested, connecting with others, really does benefit our patients in the long run. It does, right? Then every yeah. patient kind of feels like your first patient of the day. You're dialed in, you're paying attention, like there's a lot. And you never, you never try not to be that person by the end of the day, but if you don't take your breaks, you know, if you don't go mm -hmm. ahead and actually eat um, at some point, get some fresh air, that, you know, you don't realize, but it actually dwindles, you know, that, that connection dwindles by the end of the day. It and, sure does. And we really have to do our best. Yeah. When we were chatting earlier, we talked about finding ways to be methodical in the madness. What are some obstacles that prevent technicians from adopting a strong patient safety culture? I think we want to get everything done and we want to get everything done efficiently and keep moving and, and really focus on patients. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when we run out of time, right, to be methodical and to really focus on patient safety. And patient safety is more than just making sure that they don't get hurt. It's, you know, what have we done to make sure that all of the things in the day we've done to keep them safe, right, whether that's medications or that we just don't make simple mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times in a day do you make a mistake? I make them often. Thank and you, you don't want that to Im impact your patient care, right? So it's one of those things where, you know, we're masters of triage. It's just kind of in our nature, right? And we have, sure. you know, I think one of the things I love about watching technicians do their thing is that they've got great intuition and they've got great observation skills, but they also have critical thinking. And so looking at their situation, not only the patient care piece, but just like the environment that they're in and really being engineers will help them kind of overcome those obstacles. Because when you live in the moment and it's, you're the one taking care of the ICU patients, you're the one that's taking care of surgery, you know, you being instrumental and figuring out solutions to make that work best are ways that we can overcome the obstacles of not, you know, of mistakes happening, right? Like coming up with any sort of tools um, or checklists or whatever it is to really help us make methodical changes um, so that we can keep our patients safe. That's true. And who better than a veterinary technician or nurse to do that? Because right. we're there all the time and we know the process really like precisely. Yeah, and you know, and that's such a good too, a point too, Samantha, because you know, we, we do know that process, right? We do it so many times that sometimes we're like, oh, I've done this a thousand times, you know? Yeah. But it's also the thing that, you know, we get interrupted and there's other priorities that come in. Of so course, yeah. kind of coming up with 
with methods like checklists or whatever it is so that we make sure that we have a system in place that we know that nothing was forgotten. If we get pulled away, someone else mm -hmm. could pick up where we left off and that wouldn't result in a patient injury or some sort of mistake that could happen that could impact a patient. That's great. It's so practical and just really It's simple, yeah. right? But it's hard it to take time to actually do the, the checklist. Right. It's one more thing to do in the day, uh, but the end result is, is is exponential in the fact that it really does help protect our patients and ourselves. Because if we make a mistake, again, I know we talked about self-care, but if we make a mistake, we take it home with us, mm -hmm. you know? And that's so important to do whatever we can to help improve those systems. There's often pressure to see so many pets, and I know that sometimes, especially when we get really good at our jobs, technicians take pride in how quickly and efficiently we're able to work. But you say that taking your time is really one of the cornerstones of consistent and safe care. It really is, you know, and again, it's hard. I am mm -hmm. not devaluing the fact that you're like, but I got stuff to do. Right. Um, <laughs> but it, it is, it's taking that thoughtful pause to be present. You know, what do we do? Think, you know, even think about like if, if you in, in a ward um, or a kennel, you have two black labs right next to each other with very similar names, probably midnight or something like that, right? Yeah. Having two totally different procedures. If you rush through that process, what if you pick out the wrong pet, right? And maybe maybe you don't go through and maybe the procedure doesn't happen or whatever that might be. But you know, what is if 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 you're rushing, those are those kind of moments that can go that can change a pet's a pet's life. Mm -hmm. So it's those little things, it's going through those checklists, it's saying, okay, Samantha, was it a left lateral or a right lateral? Like confirming those kind of conversations. And that's not lack of confidence. That's actually really being a great professional and a leader within your practice because someone else is watching you. And if you kind of over or like, oh, I can just bypass that step. I can go ahead and do this because I already know what I'm doing and I'm going to get to the end goal. You know, there are others that are learning and watching from you. And so again, it's, it's going through like taking that moment, really being present, and really having situational awareness too. Because while you're focusing on your patient, there's a thousand things going on around you, but they deserve your undivided attention. Absolutely, I love that. And it's so important for the patient, but like you said, it's also just so important for creating that culture right. in that hospital of we take our time, we double check things. I love that. Yeah, and it opens up the door for communication. Because when, you, when I was a new technician, I was like, whoa, you know. And you learn from the people around you. Exactly. Yeah. And you hear their conversations, right? Mm -hmm. And how much did you learn from that technician who could thoughtfully speak to a doctor or anybody else in the team and be respectful and get their point across and advocate for that patient? You know, or if there was a mistake that was made, they could admit it because mm -hmm. no one freaked out on them, you know? Maybe in the moment you were like, Whoa, and you need to correct, you know, like how you responded to that situation. But those kind of things set the, set the whole culture for the hospital. So nobody hides things, that they're just open and transparent. And it helps you when, again, you leave that day, that you're not second guessing yourself. Did you do the right thing? Am I in the right profession? Because a simple mistake was made um, that you couldn't actually talk about and come up with a solution for. That's so important, I love that. So what can we do if we want to be the best possible advocates for our patients? I think communication is a huge opportunity there, right? Like if you see something, you speak up. If we notice, you know, when our, our doctors and our technicians and our whole patient care team works together to focus on our patient, I think we look through different lenses, right? And so we have different perspectives. So if we notice something like, you know what, they're not acting like they normally do, or I'm seeing this change, mm -hmm. having that thoughtful conversation because it's your patient too, I think is huge. And I think, you know, if, if when we're in situations where we might not be a, a completely comfortable with it, like we're not 100% sure, you know, we want to we wanna be there and support the doctor or the patient, but we're not completely sure of all the steps that we need to take, or it's just something that completely makes us nervous, you know? We need to be able to, to talk about that and speak mm -hmm. up for it. And then on the reverse side, speak up for our patient because you can read a patient, right? Like you, you can see them and be like, they're not okay with what we're doing. Like yeah. they're completely scared right now and that's not okay. So what can we do to change that? What can we do to change this experience for them? They're really not like, be, like they don't like being on this table right now. And we are their advocates and we can feel that. And just like they can feel our stress right through their hands. If you've ever noticed that, like you're like yeah, nervous about something and then all of a sudden they're yeah. like, they're like something's not right. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we feel that with them too when we when we generally you know mm -hmm. hold them and we need to advocate we need to speak up and then I think that's the again 
those constant conversations, which seems like there's always conversations going, but it's the meaningful ones to go, this isn't okay, I'm not uncomfortable with this. And there's lots of techniques to help support that. And it takes time mm -hmm. because people get nervous and they're like, should I say something to a doctor? Yeah. But we're all the patient care team. And so I think having confidence in your knowledge and your critical thinking skills and your intuition is so important to really be a true advocate for that patient. I love that. I think that we all have a common end goal, so yes. it should be collaborative. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. Often when we think of patient safety, we think of anesthesia or medicating patients, but what risks are associated with handling pets and how can we address those risks? Making sure we're reading the room. We have great yeah. situational, situational awareness mm -hmm. and we need to have mutual support, right? We need to support the doctors, but we need to support those patients too. And so taking a breath and really understanding what might impact them. Um, making notes. I mean, how many times yeah. do you have, like they don't like their nails, you know, nails touched. And for, for, my, for my pet, you know, you touch her ears, it's game over. She's done. You're not going to do anything Ooh. else. So, no, she just is. That's just how she was made. And, you know, the, there's a note in the file that says, do, right. not, do not go ahead and go, we're going to go check her ears first because then nothing else is going to happen. So making like really, and not just like, you know, she's crazy, you know, right. <laughs> like thoughtful words. But <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where making those kind of notes, right? And these are the things they like. These are the things they don't. And while you do have to take a deep breath, and there's so many good programs that are out there to help people influence how they handle patients. Um, you know, it's taking that deep breath and reading them and going, mm, they're not okay with something and how do we change this? And I think that's really important. You know, it, it reduces their stress and anxiety. It reduces our stress and anxiety when they're not like, oh, they hate to see me. <laughs> they're happy to come in. Um, but it also reduces their injuries because they're stressed and reacting and mm -hmm. it reduces our injuries as well because they're going ahead and telling you, I've warned you, I'm not okay, you're right. not listening, and now I'm going to react, right? That's their, that's their only way of telling us. How do we promote this culture so that there's consistency across the workplace? Um, I think it is, it has a lot to do with having different people within the hospital meet and talk about issues, right? Mm -hmm. So if we try and tackle everything all at once, nothing really gets done. If, if nothing is a priority, you know, if everything's a priority, nothing is. Yeah. So I think it's one of those things like, okay, we have trouble with getting callbacks done. You know, how do we actually work on this? That isn't a problem that's going to be solved by a doctor or a doctor, doctor and technician alone. Mm -hmm. You know, someone at the front desk needs to be involved, even the office manager. And so then you go ahead and you take multiple perspectives into account to come up with thoughtful solutions and then run it by the team that's actually going to be executing it. And while, again, I know we're super busy, but taking those little moments really helps you come up with a culture that saves you time in the long run. And so I think that talking about it, being proud about it, um, sharing even if it's a near miss, right? Like something could have gone sideways, but it didn't. Celebrating those things, talking about it, so that talking about the good and talking about the bad all becomes just a neutral playing field. And even, you know, you could be a leader and you make a mistake. That's okay. Apologize for it. You know, mm -hmm. like maybe you, the mistake happened and I responded in a way that really wasn't as kind as it should have been. M apologize, be humble and be like, you know what? I'm sorry that I treated you that way. Or I'm sorry that I used those words. I was reacting to a situation, which it doesn't, you know, that's no excuse. And doing that even in an open place where people are like, wow, you yeah. know, um, and not thinking that, well, they're okay with it. They've moved on with their day. Cause that now it's bothering them potentially at home. Those are those just transparent things that we can do that can really improve the culture. There's no hiding, there's no feeling bad, there's just having really honest, professional you know, conversations because we spend so much time with our, our work families mm -hmm. and we want it to be a good experience, right? So those kind of talking through issues and celebrating successes I think really helps that to be consistent across the hospital, the, ho the hospital environment. It's so important. So everything we've talked about so far has been from our perspective. How important is it for us to keep in mind the veterinarian's perspective as we work together to maintain a culture of safety? Um, I think you said it really well before, Samantha, that it's it's us working together on a mutual goal, right? We want mm -hmm. our patients to be happy um, and healthy. We want our clients to feel satisfied and understand the quality of medicine that we're providing for them. So we bring different lenses, but we focus on the same end goal. And I think hearing them out, like when they have concerns or they're like, ah, oh, I was waiting forever and nobody was there, instead of being like, well, we're busy, you know, being like, I understand, you know, and let's come up with a solution for this. It might not 
fix that particular moment, but long term it could really, you know, reduce tension or frustration because we don't know the world that they're what they're dealing with in that moment, or mm -hmm. they might have had to deliver to deliver some really hard news. And I think sometimes we overlook the emotional impact that it has on our veterinarians, and we want to support them, but we're also like, you need to go to the next room. So giving them permission to take a moment too, I think, is really important. And I think being, you know. Being okay with speaking our minds about certain things, or I, you know, this is what you want done. You know, I absolutely have this. You go do what you have to do, and we're really working on that collaboration will help us support um, the doctors in this effort as well. I love that, creating that culture of honesty and just open conversation is so important and so beneficial in the long run. Yeah, because we want them to get home too, right? Like we yeah. don't want them to be stressed out and because it, it impacts, you feel their stress, you feel bad for them. So then it Im impacts the culture Absolutely. and they're trying to support us too. And, and so that's where that mutuality is so, so very important. Carolyn, thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us today on this important topic. I hope our, our viewers feel inspired to speak out for safety in their hospitals and clinics. Thank you so much, Samantha, I really appreciate it. And thank you to Mars Veterinary Health for sponsoring this Veterinary Technician Takeover edition of Vet to Vet. We hope to see you back for our next in-depth discussion. And remember that patient care starts with self-care. <laughs>